Dead, dull, dead, never. Dead, might as well be dead. Dead, dead, dead. Christ. Ah, Marty. Uh oh. Now we're in trouble. Hey, sweetie. Where is he? It's in the office. Hello, doomed one. Money tipped him, please. You're wearing black. This is a piastre, not a funeral. You taught me black was slimming, but whatever you say, one fat pig coming right up. Looking good, girl. Look at this. We needed a part animal like you to lighten things up. Monty! Hi, drop everything. Yeah, 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 no. This command performance. Get over here now. Ah, I got him. Ah, good mom. You look great. Can't believe you're sick. Oh, no. You should see my headshot. Now you can get me a Tylenol commercial. So, um, who can I call? Yeah, we're doing okay. Right, Tim? We'll probably need a bouncer. You know, there's even a few single sister rape men coming. Single and straight mm -hmm. in Hello. this house? Hey, Johnny. Get hey, the hand out of your face. Wait, wait, one second. Do you call your father? Next. Call him. The jerk would never come. Tim Bergen, Nick Stark's partner. He did call yeah. Brandon. Fuck no. Oh, what is coming for Tim? I didn't hear you say that so we can stay friends. But you've got to. Oh, no, forget it. End of story. It's not going to be on a happy Oh, no, we don't. We start with the clip. Oh, the clip's being. Oh, we're on. Oh, my God. <laughs> Here we welcome everybody to the second half of Girl Talk. Almost yeah, fluffed up. Work. This, of course, is the segment of Girl Talk where we look at videos, and the film that we're having a look at this evening is called It's My Party, actually suggested last week by Stephen. So we did see a scene from it last week. Joining us on the panel to talk about this film is the fabulous and ever, ever expanding Shay, who has had a haircut. <laughs> Welcome, have. Shay. Thank you. We have a new video panellist this week as well. His name is Matt. Hi. Matt, welcome. Don't worry, we'll eat you up and spit you out the other end. <laughs> <laughs> and Jay, who's getting quite a big fan base out there in television land. Sure. There's so many people coming up to me on the street and saying, who's that gorgeous man in the video <laughs> panel reviews? It's my party. It's uh, the story of, uh, it's really in the HIV and AIDS category, and it's the story of a young man who, rather than face um, dying of HIV and AIDS, decides to throw a party and, and take his own life. It was made in 1995. What did we think? Um, okay, I'll start. What the <laughs> yeah, hell? I thought you might. <laughs> um, regardless of the fact that, yes, I bawled my eyes out at the end of the film, um, I overall found it a fairly bland film. Um, uh, how can I say this? Um, there didn't seem to be any kind of passion from the you know from the actors from the just the whole st everyone. It it seemed very detached. The whole theme seemed very very detached as a film. It, it didn't really engage me at all. Yeah. So I found it really bland. I didn't feel the actors really kind of it really isn't gave bizarre given the subject. Matt, do you think yes. it'd be a really pa 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 passionate subject? Yeah, matter? and I actually felt um, that they chopped it full of full of famous names. You know, there's Olivia Newton-John, Roddy McDowell, George Siegel, um, Marlene Matlin, um, in the, Eric Roberts, and whoever else. They jammed it full of stars to kind of give it that oomph, and it didn't work. To be honest, I don't think it worked. Now, you're such a hard woman. Shay. I am, I must admit. I'm very fussy. <laughs> but yeah, so what did you guys think? What did you guys think? Yes, well, again, <laughs> have to disagree. But um, yeah, I, I can understand that. But I mean, I still did enjoy the film. Um, it was very, uh, in terms of the characters though, they had a lot of, um, a lot of token characters who were very stereotypical, I thought. Um, Lots of sort of uh, friends of gay people that you expect, you know, gay people to have. You know, um, there's like the fag hags, and, hag, and yes. there's the understanding um, parents, and there's the there's the homophobic parents, and yep. um, there's your kind of angst-ridden homosexuals and everything like that. And it um, tries to do everything. Do you think? Yeah, it Is tried it? to. And it didn't quite pull it off, but yeah, it did try to incorporate too, too many aspects of, of gay life. I think so. Um, yeah. We, we and some very unrealistic aspects of gay life. Oh. Um, 
I love yeah. this gay life thing. This, this gay I've always life been style. trying to live a gay life. <laughs> I failed dismally. <laughs> Being the heterosexual woman that I am, we should have another another look at another clip from the movie. This is a clip from It's My Party, and it's not a film without issues. Have a look at this and see what you think. Okay. Okay. Is your father coming? Well, he called from the office. We'll be here any minute. <gasps> It'd be so good. Excuse us. Look, Nick's family needs to say goodbye, and what little time is left. What will happen to him? You don't want to know. What will happen to him? It's progressive multifold glucoencephalopathy. It moves fast. He's already losing his peripheral vision. Then you're here to help? Look, Brandon. You're being here. It's just adding a lot of stress and confusion. Why don't you do everybody a favor? Leave your plane before it gets back. I have a right to be here. No, no, no. You lost that right when you kicked them out of your house. Who the fuck are you to judge? This is between me and Nick. What's this? Uh, looks like one of Nick's art pieces. Oh my God. It's our friends who died of AIDS. There's so many of them. Jim Bixby was first. He and Carl were together for... How did you stay together for so many years? Well, too many legos aren't easy. He died in the hospital. Tubes coming out of everywhere. You're a doctor, right? Ran the aid to the county and so I couldn't take it. Some of the harsh no, realities of the of this era, which is still continuing, of HIV and AIDS. How did... Oh, Matt, we have to canvas your opinion before we move on to General Convo, but what did you think? Okay, well, I just thought that um, I'd like to compare it with perhaps Disease, disease of the Week type movies. Um, <laughs> but it was a step above, I thought it was quite a big step above that because whereas they really, um, to, to sort of milk our tears, they often concentrate on just one, perhaps a couple of characters. But with this, even though it was, it was about one person, um, it was like they were relieving our stress by looking at... Um, keep switching from different character to yeah. different character. Yeah, you were saying um, that. I love that disease of the week type thing. Doesn't it remind you of those soap operas that the cancer soap operas that you know everyone's you know yeah everyone's rally is dying of cancer in America and they so they made a big it became a big mm. genre of soap opera style movies movies made for television. I mean with a lot of um, well I haven't seen that many <laughs> age related movies perhaps too but um, I think in a lot of ways they they aren't really much different to disease of the week type movies, if you know what I mean, except that for the gay aspect, bringing that in and bringing in the prejudiced aspect as well. Otherwise, often they're pretty much the same anyway. It's yeah. almost like, um, wow, we've got another disease we can exploit, you know, on, on for, vil for films and videos, let's exploit. Yeah, and wow, it's even got a little added twist. It's for home you know, homosexual, fantastic kind of thing. <laughs> I really resent that, that yeah. kind of film. I had a lot of trouble, I have to say, with the, um, what I call the, the hierarchical class <coughs> element of this movie, because they, they, exactly. these, are, these are two boyfriends, one of which gave the other two horses as a birthday <laughs> present, I think. And we all get two horses That's for right. our well, birthdays, we were, don't we? <laughs> we, were just going, we were just saying we're probably going to go home and feed our horses after this <laughs> segment. But how did you feel about that? Does it kind of place it in the realm of the elite of these style of movies? I was just wondering whether perhaps it's it when I saw those scenes before I spoke to any of you about it, if it was just related to a different generation. Is this what they used to happen with gay people? <laughs> they get horses but, given to each other. But, and that's the perception. You know, you have a look at a, that whole genre of films. They're all really upwardly mobile gay men, you know, and they all live in fantastic places. And, and the reality is that that's not the reality. It does we fall a lot on, rely a lot on stereotypes it in this did. film. There are a, a lot of stereotypes running through it, yeah. The, it, the film is littered with all of these celebrities, as you mentioned before, yeah. Shay. So we've got, a, the, we've got Olivia Newton-John in this film. We what have. do we think? <laughs> um. I, for one, I miss the tight leather trousers that she wore in Greece. I was hoping <laughs> that she would have dragged those out of the closet <laughs> just for this film. Oh, yeah. I think in the publicity for this movie, they really concentrated on Olivia. In fact, she's got the most minor of roles, really. Um, so I was sort of watching out for, even though I'm not personally a big fan, but 
Um, and Did you think she would have had a bigger role? Given? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just found the use of, of celebrities really gratuitous. There was really no need for it to be uplifted. And most of them just had these kind of minor little roles that really, you didn't need those. The role Roddy McDowell played, one minute, you know, you watch it, and the next minute he's there. He's there for five minutes. I had no idea what kind of character he was supposed to be playing. Um, and then he's gone McDowell. again. And so what was the point? If, if anything, they're distracting. They, I found yeah, that. Yeah. Do you think it was a bid for credibility, putting big names in it Quite that possibly. makes this film credible, which is a bit sad. The film is called It's My Party, and it's the film that we've been, we've been taking a look at this week. You should get it out and, have, and decide for yourself. It was made in 1995, and it's a whole, there's a whole spate of HIV and AIDS films to have a look at. Next week, we'll be looking at um, a film called Desperate Remedies, Jay. It's a film you've chosen. What's that yes, about? Yes, I have to plug this film, being a <laughs> Kiwi boy. Um, it's, it's a New Zealand film um, directed by uh, two gay males, they're, they're partners. Uh, one is Stuart Maines, who is known for a couple of Xena episodes, um, and the other one is a famous uh, gay author, Peter Wells. Um, it stars Jennifer Ward Leland of Fast Forward fame mm -hmm. and Michael Hurst from Hercules. Um, and the premise, it's, it's like a soap opera on acid um, <laughs> set in, in 19th century New Zealand. Sumptuous. Um, very, well. very interesting film. This is a scene from Desperate Remedies. And we'll, I guess we'll, join, we'll see, we'll talk about this next week. Thanks for joining us. Take a look at this film. It's very sexy. Please, I need only a drop. Dorothea! Whoever's out there, I'll give you money, jewelry, anything you want! My sister's rich! It's between me and the devil, Mum, and I've never lost yet. Naturally, we appreciate your high position. But we also appreciate that your income as such cannot even cope with the interest of your obligation to our institution. Mr. Weedle, I have set in motion a situation, a company which I will have, well, control over, which is certain to do good business in the developing situation. Developing situation? Very good business. When will this be? Very soon, I hope. How soon? <laughs>